Welcome back to the Figuring Out Podcast. My name's Dana. My name's Dominique. And this is episode 31. Episodio 31. 31 and feeling fun. 31, 30, flirty and thriving. That was the last one. But we're in the 30s. I'm just going to use that for the next 10 episodes. (laughs) We're going to fucking milk the shit out of that one. Dominique, how are you this week? I'm okay. You okay? I'm okay. okay. I did. Just I'm hanging in there. I am stacked. literally that cat poster. I am hanging in there. Oh, I'm the cat tired. on the fence. And it's like the yes. little kitten, the orange kitten. Yes. That is the, I am the cat. The one I, in every guidance counselor's office. Yes. <laughs> that you find yourself staring in while you're waiting to get seen by someone. And it's like, have I been staring at this poster for 10 minutes? And has it yes. really been talking to my soul? Yes. <laughs> How are you, Dana? I am just doing peachy keen. That's cool. I'm, I started working on my own schedule and technically for myself. Tell us about it. I started doing this thing called Instacart. What's and it's that? It's a grocery shopping delivery service where people send me lists. I go collect those items from the store and deliver it to their house. Any affiliation with Instagram? Are you taking pictures of these groceries? Are you adding filters? What's the deal? No, but I do scan the barcodes from my phone. Technology, people. Don't we love it? That's where we're going. Where we're going with this episode... Segway! ...is to another guest! Oh my god, people just like us and they keep coming on. It's just really good. We got a (laughs) guest! He is here to guest up the place. Can I guess who this guest is? We could try. It'll be in the title, so it's really not a good guessing game. Who the fuck are you? (laughs) My name is Walter Oriana. Hi, Walter. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. And what do you do? Um, I'm a local photographer. Yeah. Yeah. You have an amazing Instagram. And you're very talented, can I just say. Thank you. You've always been very talented. Thank you. I've come a long way. (laughs) <laughs> have you guys ever taken pictures together? No, we have not. We've talked about it. Yes. But we something have not that yet. is in the works. Maybe, possibly. Yeah, yeah it's no. um, a long process. Yeah. Uh, he has me, a certain me, style. Yeah. It, we gotta, like, pinpoint something. Yeah. What's your style? Um, I do a lot of documentary storytelling type of photography. Okay. So it's not, like, super fabricated creativity. It's kind of like whatever Real happens, happens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so. Authentic. Yeah, his Instagram is basically like photojournalism almost. Yeah. That's really? Yeah. For. That's really interesting. Yeah. It's very, his his Instagram is one of my favorite Instagrams that I follow. Damn, that's serious. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's look serious. Forward, I'm just seeing you on their feeds. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, to kick this uh, bad boy of an episode off. Yes. We actually have a question from our previous guest for you. Oh, wow. This yeah. question comes from Kelsey Volk. Hell yeah. I said Kelsey it right. Yes, you She'll did. be proud Volk. of me. Kelsey Volk would like to know, okay. which category of porn is your favorite? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just right, off right off the bat. Well, um, I don't know. I like to explore. So Good. Just whatever's on the, the I, main page. I go to the main page. I hit refresh and whatever calls my attention. That's my attention. <laughs> that's go. how. That's, that's pretty fair. That's it's, like the YouTube format, but yeah. I mean, you're there to get a job done. Exactly. So you might you're there to get a job done. So set your sights. Yeah. And yeah. Set your standards <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> just exactly. go for it. Low you know? expectations. You know? No low, low expectations. <laughs> Uh, yes. You achieve so much. That way. Exactly. Never let down. Never let. Never down. let down. <laughs> it's something I'm working on. I walk in there and whatever happens happens. Whatever happens happens. That's a yeah. good attitude for life. That is a good Absolutely. attitude for your uh, uh, internet browsing habits. Yeah. Make sure you clear that shit. You good know? for you. <laughs> good for you. So speaking of whatever happens happens, would you say you're more of a take what you can get or an all or nothing? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I think I'm really, I go with the flow a lot. Yeah. Um, I do work with what I got. Mm-hmm. Like one of my favorite quotes is like, play the cards you're dealt. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. whatever is on the, on your plate, make the best of it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm like really shitty at planning, mm-hmm. obviously, because I was half an hour late today. Um, <laughs> it's quite all right. It's okay. But yeah, I mean, it comes down to like just whatever you know, spontaneous decisions usually have great outcomes. So mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I like. Exactly. Can I just go with the wind. That element of surprise. Exactly. Yes. I like to be surprised. Yeah, life is boring otherwise. Um, yeah, and it doesn't go 
according to plan anyway, so fuck Never, it. <laughs> never, <laughs> so ever. <laughs> like, you, you push the universe into a plan, the universe will push right back and be right. like, bitch, you thought. <laughs> so, um, what do your average days consist of? Does it vary, like, your life preferences? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I have, I have been working on, like, a pretty, like, solid format. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I work at Starbucks. Okay. Um, I live that half barista, half artist type of life. So every morning it's kind of like go go go. Mm-hmm, like yeah. I wake up at four thirty every day. God um, bless. Oh my god. <laughs> I work hard until eleven. Yeah. And then the rest of the day is mine. So I kind of take it how it comes, That's day good. to day, and then. That's a good schedule. Yeah. yeah. And I I don't like to shoot at night, mm-hmm. so I don't work, or like edit or anything if the sun is up. Um, okay. Then once the sun is down, that's when I begin my mm-hmm. editing processes and sit down and work. So do you go to bed yes. early then? No. If you're going, you how late do you go to bed? Uh, it depends on feeling. Uh huh. Um, Sometimes I don't. <laughs> Sometimes I just do the whole wheel again yeah. and again. Average, I would say like eleven, but like that's not bad. I, I mean, mean, to get up at 12, four. One, two, three, four, five hours. Yeah, my, that's my optimal sleeping time. Wow. Five okay. Five hours. I mean, hey, I William wish. Bonaparte did it. Did he? Yeah, he only survived on like three or four hours a night, and he has an ice cream named after him, so he did something right. He did also a lot wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There is ice cream, though. There is There's ice cream. The ice cream. It's, you know what matters? The the you know what matters? The frozen dairy. The end result. Like, <laughs> what's sticking around right now? <laughs> what is something that makes you get out of bed in the morning? Um, so recently I switched to Fujifilm. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. I was a Canon photographer. Mm-hmm. And um, I just found myself, like, super uninspired. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Like, it just wasn't my camera. And then um, I was given an open budget to purchase any camera I wanted from my brother. Oh, wow. Um, oh, hey, that's a nice Yeah, he was willing to invest in me. Yeah, so yeah. Um, he gave me, like, open budget kind of to pick whatever I want. Um, and I landed on this Fuji, and then I got it, and I was kind of, like, reluctant because it was so new. It's like a whole new world yeah. switching. Yeah, you got to completely relearn something. Yeah. Going jo- from Joy to Apple. Exactly. It was, like... True. A whole, whole different settings and everything. Um, and then as time went on, like, I really grew to love the camera. Mm-hmm. And I found, like, my lens. Like, this is, like, the lens I use, like, 80% of the time. What lens is it? This is a 25 millimeter. 25 millimeter. Yeah. What, what, what were you using with your Canon? Um, with Canon, I was using, like, 18 to 135. So it was, like, a super zoom lens. Okay. okay. It was, like, a telephoto lens. Mm-hmm. Um but it was like super big and like bulky and like I like to be yeah, discreet. Yeah, Canon cameras are. Yeah, so I like to be yeah. like discreet, like blend in with the streets and yeah. then this let me do that. It's a that. very slender yeah, it's camera. Super it's very cool nice. Too. Look at that. It looks like a film camera. That's my favorite part. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, when I first saw that you got that camera, I was like, oh, is he shooting film? Like, yeah. oh, that's dope. Like, and then to know now that it's actually a digital camera. Yeah. Is it's wow. a Fuji Film XT2. Shout out Fuji Film, sponsor this podcast, also yeah. sponsor Walter. Yeah, Fuji X, Fuji X. But, um, so I have, um, like, this shelf in the corner of my room with, like, all my cameras. I have, like, six cameras. Oh, wow. Um, but I, I wake up, and it's, like, the first thing I look at. And then just seeing, like, all those cameras that I really like, that's, like, what motivates me to, like, yeah. go out and shoot wow. and stuff like that. Good. So it's literally the camera that gets yeah. me out. You know, like this is your favorite one out of the six you have. This is this is my favorite. One. I have other. Uh, it's like four other like thirty five millimeter and uh, film cameras, and then uh, one Polaroid from the eighties. That's like original. No like, way. Do you like, use it? Ever? I do. Yeah, it's in like the back seat of my car. Oh it wow! fucking sucks. Like you really gotta put a lot of effort in. But yeah, making a good photo on that is like super rewarding. Yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. How old were you when you got interested in photography and were like? I kind of want to do that. I was actually, compared to everyone, super late. Yeah. I was, it was my first or second semester at OCC. Okay. Um, and I've never picked up a camera before that. It was, um, I like took it just to fill my elective courses. Mm-hmm. And then I bought like a really like basic entry level camera. And then I was like, fuck this, like I deserve better. And then I started like working my way up and then um, that's how it started. Like usually people start like super young. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah. You know, when I was, like, six years old, I took my first yeah. picture. But, like, I didn't at all. Yeah. And not until I was 19. Mm-hmm. And then um, I took a art history class. And then I was like, you know what? This shit is fucking dope. And then now what I try to do is kind of, like, use those old paintings and stuff like that to inspire my photos now. Mm-hmm. So, like, the compositions I yeah. use and, like, yeah. the, um, behind my portraits is a lot of, like, inspiration from, like, 
Frida Kahlo, like yeah, was, like, just a, all the emotion, right? Exactly, yeah. it was like super like self portrait based kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, it's all about like emotion. Okay, that's awesome. Um, do you have any projects you are currently working on? Oh yeah! Oh my gosh, I'm freaking booked. Like, yeah, I'm doing a lot. What's um, going on? So my two biggest ones is actually one is due the eleventh. Um, I worked with two wrestling teams. Um, okay. over the resting season that was okay. during the winter mm -hmm. um, and I'm producing a photo story uh, which is like a personal project um, it's basically studying the differences between like an underdeveloped town like Lakewood New Jersey mm -hmm. and then Tom's River who's like super established in the yes. sport mm -hmm. um, and what I try to do is like show like the feminine like the feminine part of wrestling like okay. it's very a very vulnerable sport yeah, you know? yeah. like everyone thinks it's like a brute sport yeah mm -hmm. but um it really like exposes your vulnerabilities so that's like my personal project um but for them i actually was assigned to make like documentaries for both of them um and it's been like a long come like long time like i've been trying to do it for four years now okay like create a film for wrestling yeah and it's kind of like trial and error like discovering the format and stuff like that um and then this year was like the first time I thought I had like enough good footage and enough content to like put a whole film together. Yeah. And it ended up working out. Um, Tom's Rivers is 11 minutes long. Mm -hmm. And then Lake Woods is 7 minutes long. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they both have like their own like different subjects too. And do you have release dates for those two yet? Um, Tom's River North is going to be April 12th. Okay. I'm um, doing a private screening April 11th, which okay. is only available to the families and the coaches and the wrestlers. Okay, and then 12th, I'll awesome. release it to everyone. Yeah. And so then, it'll be out by the time this podcast is out, because we're delayed a couple weeks. <laughs> Where can we find it when we want to see it? Um, so I'm going to put it on YouTube. Okay. Um, I'm not very present on YouTube, uh, but when I do finish like video projects, I post yeah. it on YouTube. You just search my name. Um, YouTube's good for archive. Yeah. So I have like a lot of shitty stuff on there, but yeah. I don't care to delete it. So <laughs> why not? I mean, it's, it's, it's your it's, past, it's, it's your history, exactly. it's who you it's, are. Um, exactly, it, it's your resume. It's yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this is how I've improved. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You get to see the progression. Yes. That's why my Instagram has eight hundred posts because it's all progression. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a photography role model or inspiration? Um. So I have a, actually have a lot because my style changes day to day, pretty much whatever I'm feeling. But I think my most like common style is based off of Jason Lee. Okay. Um, he's the actor from My Name Is Earl. Yes. He's like he was like a big '90s skater and stuff like that. But like right now he lives in Texas mm -hmm. and he does like like rural American minimalist type of photography. Oh, okay. And um, that's like the type of stuff I like, try to go to. Yeah. Um, so like I'll go to like Howell, Jackson, mm -hmm. kind of like to get that. American minimalist, what is that? Um, what is that like? Think about like an abandoned ghost town in Texas. Okay. Like, so stripped yep, to past, the bone. Past the walls, no people, like kind of broken down. Okay. Yeah. So oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Jason kind of Lee shit. is the fucking man. Like he's a good ass photographer. He shoots yeah. like he doesn't shoot digital at all. Yeah. Like he only shoots Film. thirty-five, four oh, by five, eight by five. Um, so he's like he's like a cowboy photographer. A cowboy photographer. Like he walks around like those big ass cameras. Oh, like, like yeah. what would come to your mind if you thought of like like an old fashioned like like a photo shoot trip. setup, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like fucking Abraham Lincoln type. Like, stuff. like Abraham, Lincoln, <laughs> yeah, like, like you have to stay still for at least like twenty minutes. Yes, exactly. for this to work. But, um, that's crazy. Yeah, that's uh, for that. Um, I am super involved in like the music scene. Mm -hmm. um, I work with career opportunities a lot. Uh huh. Um, and then that is obviously Danny Clinch. Mm -hmm. um, he's like a local legend. Um, he's from Tom's Rivers Galleries in Asbury. He works in New York. Oh, okay. wow, okay. Yeah, he's, like, super established. Uh -huh. He's taking pictures of, like, Tupac. No um, way! Kanye West, Jay-Z. Wow. Um, Fish. Like, crazy-ass 90s bands. Uh -huh. Like, I'm actually interning for him in New York City, so that's super cool. Right like, now you're doing that? Yeah, Wednesdays and Thursdays I go oh, to New York. Oh, that's so cool! cool. Yeah, what kind of stuff awesome. are you doing there? Um, pretty much just working with his film. Um, well, a lot of, like, his unpublished work. Um, so whatever they need, they kind of send me through his archives yeah. to kind of look for stuff and select photos and shit like that. Okay. It's pretty cool. That sounds really That's cool. Dope. Yeah. How did you, um, meet him? Did you meet him through career opportunities? Was it like... Um, in a way. 
Um, cause I, well, I didn't meet him that night, but at the same career officer's plane. And um, I saw him there, and he's, like, famous for his hat. Okay. Um, he has, like, a very sig- uh, like, signature-style hat. Um, and I remember seeing him, and I was like, damn, like, everybody fucking knows this dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember noticing his camera. He's shooting, like, a Leica. And um, that's all I remember. I didn't meet him or anything. And then, fast forward, like, two years, I actually became friends with his sister at Starbucks. <laughs> um, she's, like, one of my usuals. She comes in yeah. every day at 7 a.m. so crazy. Dude, and then fake. That's how connections works. everywhere. Literally. Everything is connected. And then she connected me with him, and then I emailed the studio manager, and like three days later, I had the interview, and then I started a month later. Oh, so it was wow. It was that's super so cool. fast. And how so long have you been working for him for? Um, I'm going on week two. I just started. Okay, dope. But they threw me like they threw me straight to the wolves. Yeah. Like my first day, I learned how to scan film, and there you go. I selected a photo for a film being made about fish. And that they're going to use in the, in the thing. So, oh my god! Wow! Yeah, and then um, they're about to start like creating a book, and they want me to help curate it um, with his assistant. So like, right to the wolves. Right to right. the wolves. Well, that's that's, that's, that's you experience. Yep. That's experience yep. like that you cannot You'll never like, forget. You'll never. Yep. You can never pay for it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And that's going back to like the day to day spontaneous. Like, yeah. Who knew that? Yeah, you never knew. That shit. Yeah. Like, you never know. Like. Was, they said and I'm like, sure, yeah. I'm sure that internship is spontaneous. Like, you never know what you're going to be throwing right. the next day. Yeah. Like, everything's different. It's crazy. Um, would you say that you love yourself? Oh, absolutely. Good. I do. Good. I work on myself every day. Good. It's like, That's um, love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just being, like, super aware, super conscious. Yeah. yeah. Um, Making time for the things you want to do. Exactly. Yeah, so important. I find like a lot of love for myself by like loving other people. Like, yeah. Seeing other people happy. I agree. Doing shit like that is yeah. um, it's like contagious, you know. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's but infectious. don't get me wrong, like I'm, yeah. I can be a selfish dude, you know. Like I'm gonna have to be happy we myself, all have our you know. So. But if you can't be happy, how the hell are you gonna make other people happy? Exactly. <laughs> so I've heard. Yeah. So since you said that you've gotten into photography kind of later, as a child, what did you want to be growing up? Like, um, as a girl, <laughs> I had like the, the, the <laughs> typical like uh, boy, you know, like the childhood boy vision. Like I must be a detective at one point, mm. like a firefighter. Yeah. Um, you astronaut. Know, astronaut, no. My no. brother, yeah, but I didn't. You I'm, missed the. I'm astronaut. afraid of space and the ocean, so I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> I mean, this ocean is just like space vast, underwater. Exactly. Vast the, the vast, yeah. like just nothing. <laughs> Let's just stay in the middle. Let's yeah, just yeah. in between. Yeah. It's good for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I had like those very stereotypical like kind of things, and then I kind of went to like the extreme sports section of my life in middle school, and then high school I was like I had no idea what the fuck I wanted to do. Like, I just wrestled, just to wrestle, and nothing else. Um, so like stumbling into photography was kind of like, like I opened my eyes to a lot of stuff. Yeah. And um, so I would say like in high school I didn't really have an idea. Of anything like yeah. after yeah um and then when i started to do photography and like all these opportunities were opening up i was meeting people like having fun going out to shows and i was like this is a lifestyle that's like super dope super chill that i could do for the rest of yeah life. you can definitely keep up with it yeah and it's like it, it really plays back into this whole like spontaneous yeah. like exactly like message for the podcast you'll never be doing the just same thing spontaneity <laughs> spontaneity yeah. continuous spontaneity just if you see an opportunity you think it'll work out just take it yeah. oh okay. yeah deal with Seriously. the consequences whatever later happens. think about it later yeah, yeah. Exactly. grab life by the balls right yeah, <laughs> and the horns. <laughs> and the horns. Do b- both at once. As much as you can get your you hands. You have on. two hands. You do have two hands. You got feet. You got you got toe thumbs. Yeah, use it. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> so, I want to take you back. Yes. A couple years. How old are you now? Twenty one. Twenty one. Yep. Are you enjoying the twenty one year old life? It's fucking amazing. Have being able to go anywhere and be able to get a beer. Mm-hmm. Um, so it and changes meet, the world. It changes the fucking world. Yeah. It's exactly what it does. Like, you can go anywhere, not have a single plan, be like, I want a beer, and that's... That could just lead to so many other exactly. things. <laughs> it just leads to great things. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, don't be an alcoholic, though. Don't be an alcoholic. You know, but it balance. afternoon beer? Meh. Afternoon yeah. beer. There's actually... Um, I'm friends with... Uh, his, he writes for magazines. He's from Philadelphia. Um, his name's Maxwell. He has, like, a very good life quote, like, don't drink 
when you feel that you need to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Drink when you want to. Mm-hmm. And that kind of like keeps the alcoholism at bay. <laughs> that keeps the alcohol- <laughs> That'll keep a lot of bad things in your life at yeah. bay. I, I could probably assure you yeah, that. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Um, so you're 21 now. Um, yes. I want you to describe your life at 18 and compare it to the 21 year old lifestyle. 18. Yeah. Um, so 18, I graduated high school early. I was 17 when I graduated. Okay. And I was 17 when I started college. Why did you graduate early? Did you just, were you Is on that some kind of... how your birthday fell? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, in Lakewood, like, they're super lenient about, like, the cutoff dates. Basically, if you're friends with the secretary, like, you can start whenever you want. Cool. <laughs> um. Good old Lakewood. Yeah. <laughs> So when I was eighteen, I was uh, damn eighteen was it was a hard time, you know. Starting college was there's a lot of like um, life stuff and mm-hmm. relationship stuff and you know figuring out life and what I like, what I don't like. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't it's a big aware. turning point. Yeah, it's like, the time. I wasn't aware of myself. I mean, I spent all of high school living my life for others. Yeah. Right. So when I turned eighteen, I was like, um, it's time to find a way. And then, even if it takes me every day to find a way. Yeah. Um, so, 18 was good, though, because it, uh, I discovered art and photography at the same time. Uh, made some great friends, you know, so discovered a lot of good music. I kind of just let myself be open to the arts. Mm-hmm. Um, because I was a jock in high school. I was a class clown jock. So, arts, the art was a whole new world for you. Yes. Art was, a, like... Yeah, art is a way to express yeah. yourself, like, because, you know, sports are a way to express yourself physically. Right. But, like, that creative, like, mental yeah. place. Walking into the world of art is opening yourself up to vulnerability yeah. and emotion and f- realizing yourself. Yeah. Because any, any artist needs to know themselves right. the most to mm-hmm. put out their best work. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because, like, what you're putting out there, that's you. Yeah. That's it's, like, it's a, a huge representation of who you are. Mm-hmm. So and finding out who you are, especially at that age, yeah. and doing what you do is a very good Yeah, it was, very a, good it was a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Um, you know. As anything is. Yeah, that's the way life is. And then you kind of um, pick and choose as you go. Yeah. Um, uh, one of my wrestling coaches that, because after high school, I became a wrestling coach. Um, and then, like, one of my coaches that I was working with, he was like, it's not about, like, knowing what you want to do. It's about knowing what you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. It is. That's, um, you just have to keep canceling things out, keep, you know, going through what doesn't yeah. work, and yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. time to regroup. Let's remodify what we're doing <laughs> yeah, here exactly. so you can eventually reach that, like, yeah. reach that, like, point yeah. of equilibrium that you're yeah. just happy. And or you could at least just breathe. <laughs> yeah, just yeah, breathe. Even if, like, even if it's Be nothingness, it's, yeah. it's better than being unhappy. Yeah. You know? You only get one life. <laughs> Live it to the fullest. God uh, damn it. Seriously. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> what comes to your mind when you think of home? Home? Uh, my brothers. Yeah? Yeah, super close. So I have five brothers and then us, one of our cousins that we adopted. Uh-huh. Um, so it's seven of us. Um, but yeah, like, brotherhood is, like, super important to me. Yeah. Um, we are super close growing up. What's the age difference between you and your brothers? Um, it, it's... Between all two of them, like, it'll be close. Like, uh-huh. the two oldest are, like, one is, like, 36-ish, and the other one just turned 32. Okay. So they're kind of close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the two middle ones are, like, 27, 26, or 27, 25, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. And then me and my brother Angel are, um, I'm 21, he's 23, and then my cousin, who was younger than me, he's 20, and I'm Okay. 21. Okay, so you're so all, we're all like relatively the age. close. Yeah. yeah. So... You all get each other. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And um, we're super close. So we have, like, a group chat and everything. We talk every day. Good. Um, That's really good. Yeah. Yes. And, like, I try to visit them as much as I can. Mm-hmm. Um, my brother, my oldest brother lives in Japan right now. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. What's so he doing there? He's a first sergeant in the Marines. Oh, wow. Yeah. Good for him. He just won an award. Thank you for your for, service. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> he, um, he won a uh, Marine of the Year award. For his class. Oh my goodness! Yeah, so amazing. he's coming to Quantico in May, and we're gonna meet him there. Um, but my brothers are like, you know, where all of my opportunities arose from. Like all their decisions helped me get to where I'm at. Mm-hmm. So in that way, I'm like super grateful to them. Learned by thing. example. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, my one brother paid for me to go to California uh, to photograph my journey. 
um, right after I got this camera, which my other brother bought for me. Oh, yeah. that's great. So they're like, just setting you up for success. Yep, Seriously. All, and and then they're going to bank when you make bank. Yeah, they're <laughs> all in their own way. They helped me out a little bit. So that's like, you know, the brotherhood. Did you grow up with them? Like, were you guys all in the same house while you were Yep. That's yep. awesome. Same parents, same house, all the way until, you know, time, you know, life takes you away. Yeah, coming from, yeah. Um, like, I, it was just me, my mom, and my stepdad. So, like, I've always been like, ooh, other siblings that can, like, yeah. validate my experiences. Yeah. And just, like, we could just be in, like, this group together. It's, like, yeah, it's, it's built-in best friends who genuinely, like, probably want the best for you. It's literally Yeah, that's awesome. how I felt with my, because I grew up with my mom and just my brother. Like, that's yeah. who was in our house. Yeah. And to this day, we are an unbreakable force. Yeah. <laughs> like, if my brother hears someone whisper a bad thing about me or my mom, oh, he's over. ready to murder. Yeah. Like, he's he's threatened every boyfriend I've had of, like, if you hurt her, I'm going to jail. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, nothing else. No. I'm going to jail. Yeah. And, like, it's really yeah. good, though, to have that friendship with someone. Luckily, I have a lot of friendships like that yeah. yeah but um they're like my drinking buddies like we go oh, out yeah. all the time together like it'll be like four of us yeah. that go out together and um you know they'll always be there big yeah. family relationships are so interesting to me they yeah are, cause mainly because i've come from such a small family yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they can be really good or really bad yeah and my boyfriend's family is a bigger family there's five four siblings in total mm-hmm. and every time i'm just like i just love you guys so much and yeah. the bond that they all have even though they're all like pretty i mean the three oldest are like kind of close in age but ed's uh eight years younger mm-hmm. than the youngest the next brother yeah so it's just so interesting to see how they're all still so close right yeah. and like how much of each sibling is in him <laughs> like yeah. just based off of how they grew up and like the age differences and stuff yeah. like that of like it it's just an amazing thing to walk yeah. into and be like siblings wow. are great teachers yeah mm-hmm. and just the love that everyone has for each other and how welcoming they all are i'm just like oh my god <laughs> this, is, so nice. this is the family dynamic i've been missing <laughs> <laughs> like i think i was supposed to be in a large family <laughs> Do you have any other hobbies or passions besides photography? Um, not really. No. no it's kind of photography is like my only thing. Yeah. Like I make coffee and then this. But recently I've been trying to really dive into music mm-hmm. more than just sort of what I like. Yeah. Because uh, working for Danny Clinch, like he works with phenomenal musicians all the time. Yeah. So in order for me to... Are you trying to learn about music, or are you trying to, like, learn how to play music? Um, learn about music. Okay. You know, the history, what's going on now. Because mm-hmm. um, he works with a lot of great artists. Like, he goes to the Grammys every year. Like, he gets his own photo booth at the Grammys. Oh, wow. So, um, in order for me to be the best person for him mm-hmm. is to really understand the field yeah. in all regards. You know, outside of photography. Mm-hmm. Um, to understand the music he's working with and... Um, be able to connect with him like that and like his right. his um, his colleagues yeah. um, his studio managers they're all super indulged in music yeah like if you think about it if you're like if you're taking pictures of a band to know their music and to like get that on like that emotional level yeah. you, it really translates I'm sure through your lens yeah and that's why I like working with career ops mm-hmm. um, I was with them since they were like a, a four people band mm-hmm. and now they're a three people band but um they made like a lot of progression and they were one of the first bands around here that kind of gave me the opportunity to go like to go with them yeah um and be with them and kind of like be a part of the band oh Um, nice so i'm super excited to work with them again because it has been a while but i have learned a lot so so it's just going to improve how you shoot them right yeah and i think they're excited for that and with them are you excited for it oh absolutely hell yeah i'm (laughs) in it for the long run with their band wherever wherever they go they're all freaking great musicians so they're gonna do good yeah that's the kind of bond you want between photographer yeah. and band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so if they call me and go, I'm going to Australia. All right, I'm going with you. All right, you. Guess, yeah. guess we're going. Guess I got to get a guy, mate. Yeah. <laughs> See you there. Um, do you have a saying or a conversation that has impacted you to this very day? Something you keep in the back of your mind? Something that really shapes your worldview? Yep. Um, Say it. This guy. <laughs> so after high school, I was still lost. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still in the sports, 
I was a wrestling and a soccer coach for like a youth program. And I was working with this this coach and his name is Coach Jose. But he's like a legend. Like he got his coaching license in Peru. So wow. like he's like a legendary Peruvian yeah. coach. Yeah. And he came to the US and like he works all over the state, like people hire him. Um so like I used to accompany him like kind of as like to learn because mm-hmm. I thought that's what I wanted to do like to get into like you know coaching mm-hmm. and um, one day we're like driving in like Millville New Jersey and he's like um, so when you present yourself to someone what do you say like after your name I'm like oh like I'm Walter I'm a coach and he's, he straight up told me he was like but that's not your passion because I was starting to answer photography yeah. he was like that's not what you do though I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I do it every day. He's like, no, you're not passionate about it. You just show up. Yeah, wow. And I was like, yeah. I was like, damn, you're like, oh, right. Like, I'm just here because I think I'm supposed to be here. Yeah. And he was like, you got to start calling yourself a photographer. Aww. Wow. And I was like, I think you're right. And he's like, the second you call yourself a photographer, it becomes real. It's no longer a hobby. Yeah. That's just, that's who you are. That's yeah. what you're doing. So now instead of when I was saying I'm Walter Oriana, I'm a soccer coach, mm-hmm. I say I'm Walter Oriana, I'm a photographer. And it just made like such a big impact. And then he gave me like a lot of opportunities to work and to kind of like document his lifestyle as a coach. Um, so that conversation was kind of like the turning point where like it was no longer a hobby. Yeah, like I wanted like, this it to, is. Exactly, I wanted it to be my lifestyle. Yeah. And it was simply like changing a word. So does feel the saying, hi, I'm Walter, I'm a photographer, that feels different than saying, yes. hi, I'm Walter, I'm a coach. Yep. And then... Feels right. Gives you that heart right. pound. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. It like, makes this is it, what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. 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 It sounds right. It sounds fucking awesome. Yeah. Right? Um, and it, it made a different change, like, that same day, like, I felt like a different person. Just by, like, changing one word. Literally perspective shift. Yeah, Like... Dude. Thank you. He straight up told coach. me, like... <laughs> That's not your passion. I was like, you're fucking right. It's not. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, I think about that conversation all the time. I was, I'm super grateful. I said yes, you know, because he asked me the night before. He's like, I'm going to Milvo. Do you want to come? I'll pick you up. I was like, oh, fuck it. Like, what am I going to do? Stay home. Um, so I went and then we had the conversation. It changed my life since. Good. That's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty freaking It's, it's all right about. Track. Huh? It puts you on the right track. track. Yeah, it did. No, it's all about. Um, you know, making it real for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Being a teenager, and especially a younger teenager, like freshman in high school, right. sophomore, things like that, what do you think was the biggest struggles that you faced, and how would you face it now with the knowledge that you have now? Um, honestly, I, I did struggle with, like, a depression. Mm-hmm. Um, because, again, like, I was wrestling not for myself. Yeah. Like, I was just doing Something it. Something to, to do. Right, like, I was trying to make someone else proud. Yeah. And um, it just wasn't working. Like, no matter... Because I did really well wrestling. Um, but, like, no win made me happy. Yeah. No medal made me happy. Mm-hmm. And so I dealt with that for, like, a few years until my junior year. And I was, like... They sent me away to, like, a rehab le- leadership kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And they, they, like, walk you through this, like, uh, deep meditation. And it kind of... It's to, like, unlock the root of why you're unhappy. Okay. Um, and it was, like unmedicated it was like really about like discovering yourself yeah and um Fucking dad <laughs> and so that i was going through that and i was really like i was gunning to figure out like what the fuck was wrong like why yeah. can't i find happiness in my successes yeah yeah um so we're doing this thing and it's kind of like you walk through like this um junkyard and like instead of like trash it's like all this shit that makes you unhappy Okay. You know, and you kind of, like, can see... Like, in the you, meditation? Right, like, mm-hmm. in your mind, like, you can see the type of stuff that's making you upset. Yeah. And at one point, like, it really breaks you down. Like, I was, like, bawling my eyes out in the middle of this meditation. And then he kind of, like, walks you, like, you get through it, and now you're, like, walking over a hill. And then over the hill, like, he says, like, the first person you see is, like, the root of everything. And then I walk over the hill, and, like, the first person I saw was my brother, mm-hmm. who was my wrestling coach. And then it kind of made it like made sense. Like I'm not wrestling for myself. Yeah. I'm wrestling for my brother. Yeah. And that's where my unhappiness was coming from. I was trying to make him proud. Yeah. But like I couldn't even be proud of myself. Jeez. So with that happening, senior year, I didn't even compete yeah. a single match. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get my varsity letter. Mm-hmm. I didn't get senior recognition. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but I did find like a piece in understanding why I wasn't happy. Yeah. And it kind of helped me realize like my brother wasn't looking to be proud of me through wrestling or anything of that means. Yeah. He'd be he proud just, of you. Yeah. For he just wanted me to find something I'm good at and yeah. stick to it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he was so upset with me with wrestling is because he knew I wasn't passionate. Yeah. He knew I wasn't sticking it out. Yeah. So that meditation, you know, kind of helped me see that wrestling wasn't for me. Like I needed something else to make him proud. Where was this meditation? Um, it's called Torch Academy. Torch Academy? Where is that? Um, he does uh, like mobile sites. Okay. okay. Um, but he does like really big seminars. Like the one I went to was only seven of us and uh-huh. we were all wrestlers. Um, he's uh, actually a, his name's Steve Giordano. Okay. He's um, a wrestling coach for the NJSIA. Oh, okay. So he works with wrestlers a lot. And it was like seven of us there. Mm-hmm. Seven wrestlers just trying to figure it out. Yeah, just like what the fuck is going yeah, on. Yeah, like why <laughs> we kept taking second place. Why yeah. losing matches by a point, you know? Like yeah. Really trying to figure out the root of our unsuccessful stuff. Like mm-hmm. why we're like this close to Yeah. Wow. And so it was like super... It, it's a good journey. Yeah. How would you handle that now with the knowledge that you have? Um, I probably wouldn't have wrestled. Yeah. You would have yeah. just told your brother, like, dude, I don't... Yeah. It's not for this. me. Did you know when you started wrestling that that's something you didn't want to be doing? Or was it, at, like, after doing it, after realizing you're not gaining anything out of it? I didn't realize that I didn't want to wrestle till like, sophomore, junior year. Okay. Yeah. Um, because before, I was living for that title, like, of people knowing me as a wrestler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, I found that label. You know, like, now I'm a photographer and I like that label. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, the same thing. I like that. Yeah. People knew me as a wrestler. You yeah. liked having that something, right? right. Like, this is my thing. Yeah, because if it wasn't wrestling, it'd be nothing else. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I wanted that um, assurance that I was something. That identity, right. almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And so that's why I did it. And then I was realized, like, every time wrestling season came around, like, I was, like, severely depressed. Like, yeah. I went to school, I wrestled. And I went to sleep. Like, I did not see the sunlight. Yeah. Because I'd go to school, it was dark. I'd leave rest and practice, it was dark. Yeah. Sleep till the next day. And you're so, lucky if you go outside for gym. Right. <laughs> and so I realized that, and I was like, all right, it's time to figure it out. Time <laughs> to figure it out. <laughs> That's why we, we do. do. Yeah. It's all a journey. <laughs> um, how do you think technology will impact us in 10 years' time? Um, I don't know, it's kind of like give and take. Because in a way, it's giving us more opportunity to, like, express. Mm-hmm. It's making everything super available to everyone. Yeah. It's, um, it does a lot of good things. It but does. at the same time, it makes it very competitive to be who you want to be. Yes. Because the, every single field is, like, open it's like an open market wherever yeah. you go. Yeah. Say ten years ago, you guys want to do a podcast. Mm-hmm. There'd not be like there would be like ten podcasts back yeah. then. You know? Yeah. Now. By now we'd be Joe Rogan. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, it's different. Um, and say like for photography, even like sixty years ago, if you were a photographer, it's because you were brought into it. It's yeah. not like you couldn't decide you wanted to be a photographer. Yeah. You know, you were kind of given it. Yeah. Um. So now like every field is super competitive because someone can decide one day I want to be a photographer. Yeah. And that the next day they're a photographer. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it very competitive. Oh, absolutely. So I think it's good and bad. Um, and unfortunately, it's good and bad in the same places. Yeah. Because, like, if you think about it, like, you have someone else that's a photographer, let's say, like, I don't know, they're getting more likes than you. But, yeah. like, you're like, what am I doing wrong when they're just like, I'm sure their style is different from yours. Yeah. But, I, but you might still find yourself comparing, like, what, am I doing something wrong? And yeah. it just makes you really question, like, yourself and it doesn't you know allow you to stay true to yourself or you ask the questions of like what am i not doing right yeah and like do i not have the it factor do i not am i not good enough am i not talented enough am i not this because hundreds of thousands of people are trying to do the same exact thing that you're doing yeah and taking the same exact picture that you're taking and you're all getting different amount of likes and the likes fuck with your brain they do Big time, which is why I've stepped away from Instagram. (laughs) (laughs) Because I get panic attacks when I scroll through Instagram. Yeah. But it's also like you. you, I also have to like devil's advocate and say that like it's the reason why we have so many like 
crazy artists we wouldn't know of yes, otherwise. Yes, yeah, it, it of makes course. it accessible. Yeah. Exactly. To, exactly. It's more exploration than it was before. Then. Yeah, yes, for sure. It's, absolutely. Um, it makes it more available to everyone. That's the, a good thing. Um, but when it comes to likes, I actually struggled with that too. Like when I first stepped into photography, since it's so vast. Yeah. yeah. Someone with an iPhone could be technically a photographer. Yeah. Right. Um. So even like locally, um, I was felt discouraged. Like not enough likes like yeah. not enough people were checking out my work and then I forget where I read it or saw it or heard it but it was like it doesn't really like if you really love your field it doesn't matter your presence online exactly because your presence in real life is what matters of course yeah you know so yeah. if your podcast is doing well you may compared to someone else not getting the same likes but you guys are doing well yeah in real life yeah because the likes are virtual yeah as long as you feel like you're succeeding you're you're, succeeding. you're good exactly, exactly. Yeah. no matter what the fuck anyone yeah. else right says. so like i see people you know kind of taking the same photos and they're getting like 600 500 likes but their presence in real life isn't there yeah you know what i'm saying um it's really like fabricated yeah. to gear towards instagram yeah. for those likes yeah. those Whereas, people are spending all of their day working on their instagram exactly. yeah they Whereas, pour everything that they yeah. have into it. Yeah. Yeah. Instead they of only using room Instagram for as your portfolio or yeah. archive. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas when I, in going through the motions of photography, like <laughs> I stepped away from the likes because my true friends, are obviously, they're going to like, yeah. you know. But um, the, the likes could be easy to rack up, but for someone to like your work in real life is different. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what... To actually get recognition. Exactly. To be so, like, hey, I like the specific thing you do. Yes. Yeah. Because, I mean, you guys, I mean, everyone does it. You just scroll and you double tap. You yeah. don't even look at the photo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Didn't read the caption. Yeah. It's like, oh, it looks good to my eyes for a second. Control. Exactly. But to be able to show someone something in real life mm -hmm. or give them an experience like this podcast. Yeah. It's different than a like. It is. You know? It really is. It's more... It's... it's um more immersive and uh sustainable i think because like it's just that that instagram it's it's surface level shit it is what, what people s make like in a judgment in a split second is n in no way like a good way to convey who you are the right. entire person yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's i mean and a good artist is going to take their time they're not working for likes they're working to sell a print yeah to, to land a really good guest mm -hmm. yeah um to be at the right shows and meet the right people you know um, I tell everyone because like I do get friends don't want to get in photography and ask me about my experiences and I'm like just don't worry about the likes worry about your work what and in your character yeah. in real life because you can buy likes yeah you literally you literally, you literally, literally can, can, can buy, buy likes. likes yeah but you can't buy an experience like working for Danny Clinch yeah or oh. being so close to career opportunities oh. yeah you although know, Instagram like, could be that stepping stone right. but it shouldn't be everything yeah. exactly you know, like, because yeah I'm in interacting with the bands and stuff online but then I meet them and they don't like me because I'm a dickhead you know and then wh where do you go from there exactly what what is left besides a like exactly yeah. like we like your pictures but do we do we want to work with you exactly. yeah are you yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah exactly so that's like you know establishing your real life presence is more valuable than your instagram presence because i mean right now working for danny clinch is like my biggest um success yeah. in photography yeah um and then so like when i bring it up to people like that's like my thing like you got to be present in real life mm -hmm. um because Danny hasn't even ever seen my Instagram. Wow. Like, he's never been on it. Yeah. His studio manager never seen my Instagram. Mm -hmm. None of the other workers have seen my Instagram. Mm -hmm. It was literally from being a nice person to Robin. Yeah. Going to the interview, being my real self, yeah. them liking my character, my ambitions. Yeah. You know, like, they didn't see my Instagram until I started working for them. Wow. So that like that's like it makes it real like yeah. your real life presence yeah yeah it's way bigger than Instagram. Presence. But had they seen your work? Had, did you bring like a portfolio or anything nope. like that? No, didn't even ask me. Wow. Yep. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, you do have good character. So. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> You're very welcome. Now, we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Sure. And I want you to rant for thirty seconds. So pick your topic. Let me know when you're ready. Oh shit! For thirty seconds. Whatever came to your mind first is probably a good direction to go in. You've. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Set? Go. Bitch! So this is for 
photographers are just getting into the field, I just dislike that um, they're competitive in regards when it comes to your peers, um, your likes and stuff like that. Um, it really pisses me off when someone creates a shitty photo, a stock photo, and um, they get a lot of recognition for it because mm -hmm. it takes away from the craft or people who are like really dedicating themselves to it. So someone buys like a cheap camera and they make a photo and they just get lucky with the likes, you know? Well, boom. Very good rant. Very well said. Very well, well spoken. I think about it a lot. So <laughs> I think about it. It's well, always on my mind. Yeah. It's good to get it off your chest and into the ether. Yeah, hopefully um, someone hears it that needs to hear it. <laughs> Speaking of it always being on your mind, what is a time that you wish you spoke your mind but you didn't? Oh, shit. That's a good question. Um, so I won't, I won't use his name, but I had a you friend. You can use a fake name. All right, Carl. Bill. Bill. Fucking Bill. Fucking Bill. Dill Bill Carl. Dill Bill Carlson. What a fuck. He has three names and they're all first names. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he was, uh, he lived with a lot of resentment um, and he wanted to get into photography so he came to me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm trying, I was, was trying because I gave up on it. It was a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, it was about the craft um, away from like applications because like that's what he was obsessed with applying for stuff okay um, so he ended up going to school for film and he was just very angry about the people with opportunity that he didn't have mm -hmm. and he was also very mad that what he was creating wasn't what he wanted yeah and I'm like you didn't get you can give yourself time to learn your camera yeah learn photography because you got to know photography before you step into yeah. film um so you just li live with like a lot of resentment like oh like all these rich kids go straight to like film school yeah so he was probably seeing everyone on instagram yes. who is just able to buy a camera and take pictures and like you know branch off and work with people right. and he's like i don't know how to do that i'm not getting that I'm, right away yeah. Yeah. like so i was like that's not in my hands <laughs> I'm gonna cry now. <laughs> Literally. Yeah, so Too many people have that mindset. He, yeah. he was just very angry and it was upsetting because that's the type of people that I don't want to work with yeah. in my field, you know, yeah. because I'm very, like, passionate. It's very toxic into your field. Yeah, and a good photographer is going to take it day by day. Yeah. You know, moment by moment. Yeah. So that's really and what we're doing. Not every shot is going to be a perfect shot. Like, some days exactly. you're going to shoot all day and you're going to get nothing that you like. Yep. And then some days... You won't shoot at all, and it's all part of the, you know, the journey of yeah. photography. It's like looking in the mirror, but you're the mirror. Kind of. With photo yeah. Just yep. looking inside yourself. It's, yeah. <laughs> Bad days and good days, right? Yeah. It's very, um, that's why, like, I like With to shoot black With any profession, really. Too. Really, truly, yeah. Yeah. It's really a representation of yourself. What makes you lose faith in humanity? Um, being impatient. Mm. Um... So I work at Starbucks. That's like what I experienced <laughs> That's, the most. That is. <laughs> What's your favorite drink to make at Starbucks? To make? Yeah. A flat white. What's a flat white? Flat white is um, it's like a style of latte. It's just like ristretto shots, or like, it's a more sweeter naturally shot. Okay. Um, it's made with like different milk. It has a different pouring mm -hmm. technique. Um, but it's just a really cute drink and it tastes good. Um, nice. Yeah. So if you like like lattes and you get bored of it. Um, flat whites are a good alternative. What? Oat milk, what? flat white, from Divi Tree Coffee in Point. Traitor. Wow. <laughs> that is the bee's knees. And I only say that because um, I'm oversaturated with Starbucks drinks. Mm. So when I get to try somewhere else, it's yeah. hard. <laughs> it's yeah. really hard. Um, so... To follow up that question, what is something someone can do to make you lose your respect for them? Um, I mean, I don't know, because I, I do trust a lot. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, until so obviously someone gives me a reason not to trust, and then that's it. Like, yeah. I'm not mean to them, but I'm also not nice to them. Yeah. Um, do you give multiple chances? It depends the person. Yeah. Um, it and depends, situation. right? Like how they let me down. Or yeah. Their circumstances when they let me down mm -hmm. can mm -hmm. be a factor. Mm -hmm. um, but I think for respect is the way they treat others. 
Um, so I worked with my brother. It's called Challenger League. Okay. Which is a sports program for people with mental delays. Okay. Um, so when people are just like impatient people with mental disabilities like that, like that's unforgivable yeah. to be so mm-hmm. like inconsiderate and not understanding. Yeah. That so lack of empathy. D- yeah, like people don't always have control over that. Yeah. Right. So that's like when I see someone treat someone with a men that's mentally delayed, um, I'm like. That's fucked up. Yeah. Like, like, I don't even cat. care. Yeah, like... Yeah, dude, they can't control it. They literally can't they control literally it. They literally can't control and, it. But people who act like that, I feel like, are the people who are like, well, I do it this way, so I can't everyone else... Right. Just do it. Get this. on board. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that... And then that, you know, that ties into the impatient. You know, people get impatient with people that have mental disabilities or, like, you know, mentally delayed. Yeah. It's a nasty quality. Yeah. Impatience. It, sure. it, it, it's really telling. Yeah, and it's, um... It's really sad, like, especially... Um, Because I work with the public so much, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, encountering people like that, and then seeing, like, the person next to them be, like, so impatient with them. It's really unfair to them, like, Like they're living their life (laughs) the best they can. Seriously, people fucking live. Yeah, like, they're living, and that's the thing, they're living their life as best as they can. Yeah, exactly. It's the same way we do. Yeah, Yeah. and they're trying way harder sometimes than we are trying. Right. Yeah, like, because, like, just, like, I'm sure, like, auto functions for us are things that are conscious yeah, like to think about it exactly. yeah the conscious efforts they're things that they have to practice yeah right. it's exactly. a whole other it's yeah. a whole other ballpark yeah. so just and like a little bit empathy guys just a little, little bit of you go go the wrong way. you really got to be empathetic for five Anything. minutes of the interaction yeah you know what i'm saying That's and it. it could change their lives yeah they could be right? the happiest moment of their freaking life it, yeah. like like they could be having a real bad day you yeah. don't know yep. where they're coming from you don't know what happened just be nice just Every be single nice. person, Just literally in life. anybody. <laughs> yep, that's all it is. So people are impatient, like empathy. Fuck you. Get a, yeah. get a job. Fuck. Read a book. Bitch. Read a book, bitch. <laughs> 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 so we are going to start wrapping it up. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's um, awesome. It's great. Good. <laughs> well, to wrap it up, mm-hmm. we would like you to ask us and our future guest. Okay. A, a question. question. It could be the same question. You could ask us a different question and the guest the next question. Okay, so I do have a question for you guys. Okay. First. Okay. And then I kind of have to think about it for other people. Okay. But I want to know how you guys landed on a podcast over everything else. Very easy, actually. Yeah, we just do this. We just, we would hang out in my garage and just have, like, girl chat, talk. Girl talk. Love. And... Inkwell girl talk is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> the, man, the man with the co- with the coffee Shout bean out knowledge. <laughs> Thanks, Inkwell. Um, no, we would just sit in my garage. We'd have a little girl talk, and every now and then we would just stop and be like, "Why the fuck aren't we recording this? Why aren't we like videotaping this? Yeah. Like we're too funny." <laughs> <laughs> and then we would also have the deep conversations where we would be like, "Why aren't we recording this?" Right. Yeah, the meaningful stuff. Yeah, and then we kind of just came to the conclusion of. This is what we want to do. We have a message that we want to get out yeah. of, you know, we're figuring it out. Everyone is figuring it out at mm-hmm. all goddamn times. Yeah. And no one's ever going to have it figured out. Yeah. Ever. So why don't we just talk to all walks of life? Yeah. yeah. Air and, it out. Air it and out. And yeah. And hear everyone's side of how they're figuring it out. Yeah. I've actually like, just from doing this podcast, I've told Dana a couple times, like after it's guests have been on. It's self-reflective, really. It's self-reflective. People say things that really put things into perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There have been so many times where guests say like things that are coinciding like similarly to with like what's going on in my yeah. life and it makes me think about like how I'm handling the situation right. and, and I'm then like, after, damn. after they leave, you're just like, what the fuck? And then there's <laughs> been some people who are like, thank you, this was such like a good experience. And just yeah. like being able to like, provide people with that experience and being able to take away something yeah. like from it it's wholesome. like it's it's fucking wholesome it's two wholesome. halves of a whole bean wholesome. and it's all from for me it's my way of like spreading love in like the most public way yeah because mm-hmm. our, our podcast is just so positive like i feel like our message always is just so positive that like anyone who listens i think will feel just a littlest bit of love yeah. We hope. We so hope you're so getting much this love, love goes into this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we love you. <laughs> and that's good. I mean, you guys do ask like some very passionate questions, you Thank know, you. for the other people. Yeah, we so just we we try to get to know. We want to get to know the people that we're interviewing and yeah. know who they truly are and how their mind really works. Yeah. And why it's working that yeah. way. Yeah. 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 So, do you have a question for the next guest? Um, shit, I did, but it was um I 
going to ask. It's okay, the cat's very distracting. They're so cute, they're like I little. I know. That's Mango. Mango. Okay. Mango sniffing Dana's pencil right yeah. now. <laughs> um, I was going to ask. Oh, yes, I remember. Um, so for the next person that's here, mm -hmm. I would like to know how they're turning their passion into impact. You're gonna fuck someone Very up with that question. question. They're, yes. they're gonna be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes. whoa. <laughs> that was like uh, part of my journey of like getting to where I am with photography. Yeah. It's like I want my photographs to make an impact. Yeah. You know, that's awesome. what I did with with um, wrestling. I want to change the narrative for wrestling yeah. because people think it's a brute sport, mm -hmm. but that shit beats you up. Yeah, big um, time. And same with like photographing the streets. You know, it's there's a lot of realism. And yeah. like photographs for street photography. Mm -hmm. So with those, like I'm trying to bring like an impact to people to be more empathetic to Good. the streets and more empathetic to wrestling and stuff like that. Good. That's amazing. So for the next person, I want to know where how you're making your impact because it's not always about yourself. Very That's true. That's great. Now, yes. before we give our social medias and things like that, do you have any final words or words of wisdom to leave the listeners with? Um. Yeah. I mean really just wake up and try and do one thing you really love one thing you gonna make yourself feel really good about yourself mm -hmm. and one thing that's gonna make you feel like a badass that's what I do every day there you go just a lot of self gratification the stuff that I do mm -hmm. um, and then be selfless be utilitarian yeah um, all your decisions affect someone else so very just true. be very it's always aware. a train in your action yeah. yeah so just be very aware of the life you're living and the stuff that you do is very impactful, you know? Very true. And that's very well said. Walter, where can they find you on social media if they would like to follow you? Um, so I'm most present on Instagram. Okay. And it's just Walter, O-R-E underscore. Okay. Um, I use Instagram the most because it's where I've been the longest. Yeah. It's what um, you're most comfortable with. Right. It tells my life story on yes, there. Yes. Your um, 800 posts. <laughs> yes. Um, it's a good scroll. It's a lot of yeah, Walter <laughs> archives. Yeah. Um, and I use that one mostly. Like, it's good to interact with people in there. Mm -hmm. um, you get a lot of control of what you like to see and what you don't want to see. Um, and then, you know, it's great to connect with people through Instagram. Yeah. It's very accessible. So Instagram's the only place they can find you? Um, I'm on Facebook, but it's, it's all, like, SpongeBob memes from, like, 2008. And then <laughs> Spanish memes that you can't Quality reach. content all around. Yeah. We um, love good quality content. <laughs> and then, what else? My Snapchat, I... Very, I dislike Snapchat the second they put the Cosmopolitan on there. Mm. When That's they when did, you know it's going downhill. Yeah, when they put that up there, I was like, no thank you. Um, but yeah, Instagram's like the main thing. and okay. I'm always on Instagram, but can always message me. I'm always down for anything, pretty much. Okay. Well, Walter, thank you so much for being a guest on our podcast. Thank you guys thank for having you. me. Thank you. That was a awesome. joy and a half. Yes. A joy and a half. <laughs> and Dominique, where can they find you on social media if they want to follow you or talk to you? Y'all are looking. Um, my Instagram and my Twitter are Dommy Darko, that is D-O-M-M-Y underscore D-A-R-K, and the number zero, Dana. Where can our beloved listeners find you? You can find me on Twitter at Dana Renee underscore and on Instagram at Dana Renee underscore underscore. That's D-A-N-A-R-E-N-E-E -E -E underscore or double underscore if you want to see pictures of my face. That's where to do it. And you can find us also on Instagram. Yes, at... at Figuring it out underscore pod and on Facebook. Figuring out podcast. You you you'll you know. Just you know we're gonna we'll, we'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> we'll have a little chit chat. <laughs> and we will talk to you next week with a future guest. With that we will. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. We love you. Bye. Bye.